Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So today we're launching a new video series focusing on country case studies produced by the MIGNEX project. So if you don't know about the MIGNEX project, MIGNEX stands for Aligning Migration Management and the Migration and Development Nexus. So originally it is a five year research project running from 2018 to 2023, but there will be a year extension because of COVID. It is coordinated by the Peace Research Institute in Oslo with a number of additional partners in this project. Maastricht University, where I work, is one of those and we are very much involved in this project. Now, MIGNEX is one of the largest EU funded research projects focusing on migration and the funding for this has come from the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program. So there are 10 countries that are the focus of this project and all our countries of origin or transit from migrants bound to the European Union. Maybe they also have plenty of other migration experiences, but this was one of the reasons that they were also chosen for the project. So you can see the countries on the screen here where they're located on the map. And now the MIGNEX partners are currently publishing case study briefs for each country. So we have one brief per location studied in each country. And these briefs give a general idea of the migration and development indicators um, and situation in uh, those specific study areas because in each of the 10 countries, we have two or three study locations that were chosen. So what are we gonna do in this video? We're gonna zoom in on one of these key countries. So in this case, we're gonna be looking at Tunisia and looking at some of the first results, first outcomes that we've seen in the two different study areas that were looked at in the Tunisian context. And the case studies there were um, Anfida and Redef. So we have these two different areas within Tunisia where we have collected data and done more in-depth research. So there are two case study briefs now that are out. Please, if you're interested, you can also already check them out on the Mignext website. I'll make sure to link all of the information about the project and the website in the description below. So if you'd like to know more information, please, of course, check those out. Now, what we're gonna be looking at in this video is really covering kind of the backgrounds, the basics in these two study areas, and what are the first findings from these areas? And how do we do that? Well, we did key informant interviews in both of the towns. We did focus group discussions and uh, um, participant observation in each of the areas, as well as um, a survey in these areas. So we did uh, 500 randomly selected residents who participated in each of the study areas. So we have a rich ability to triangulate also between different information. Now, let's look a little bit at the context in each of these areas. So let's first look at Redef. Um, so it's a coastal mining town. It's the main mine. So it's a coastal mining town. Um, development in the town is really dependent on how well the main mining company is performing in that town. So in 2008, there were significant job cuts that definitely incited protests and con contributed also to the onset of the 2010-2011 National Revolution. Attempts to offer new positions in gardening and environmental protection were riddled with corruption in this context. All right, so what is the general atmosphere in this context? So most young adults believe that the town is changing in mostly bad ways. This is over 80% of the population. And 63%, so more than half of young adults, find it difficult to get a job. We definitely see that migration aspirations are on the high end, and for many people, they're unrealized due to shrinking access to regular and irregular migration channels. So now let's move over to the Enfida context. So it is a coastal town with a high potential for agriculture. Um, most land suitable for farming is inaccessible though to the local population. This is due to national laws setting a high cost for land and a lack of transportation. So overall, there seem to be a lack of livelihood opportunities and 48% of young adults struggle to find a job. So there have been infrastructure developments that have made a minimal expansion of livelihood opportunities. For example, in 2009, 
There was construction of an international airport, um, but locals were only given access to low paying positions with poor working conditions and outsiders were given the management roles in most of the cases. So what's the general atmosphere in this context? So migration aspirations are very high. Migration is seen as the only way to improve prospects for livelihood and shrinking avenues for both regular and irregular migration leave many aspirations unfulfilled. Now let's take a look at some of the results from our study with regard to looking at different development indicators. So what you can see here is that there are not big differences between the two regions with regard to um, people finding that earning a living is easy or manageable. In both contexts, this is less than 50% of people find this to be the case. So in both contexts also uh, um, schools are not found or education possibilities are not found to be very good. But in both contexts, there is a relatively high usage of internet and internet accessibility. If we move on to some different migration indicators, here again, we don't see big differences. Um, the majority of people have not uh, moved or lived elsewhere, but many people would like to go live in another country. This is more than 50% in both cases. It is, however, slightly higher in, in NVIDIA. So we have 73% versus 59%, for example. Um, over 50% of the adults have also been encouraged by others to migrate to another country, in particular, a richer country. And many are in contact with friends and relatives that live abroad. And in both contexts, adults have uh, definitely been in contact or known someone who has been deported back to Tunisia. However, this is a little bit higher in the case of Redif. Continuing to look though at migration indicators, we definitely see that residents of both towns have similar barriers to regular migration, which is indicated in part by uh, the proportion currently processing a valid passport. We also see that irregular migration pathways have become more popular among people, particularly in Redif, indicated in part by a higher proportion of the surveyed young adults who know someone who has been deported back to Tunisia. Now, if we look at a, if we take a more gendered lens to this, um, in general, we see that women migrate less often than men, and especially when we're talking about migrating irregularly in both contexts. While female migration is on the rise in Enfidia, it is still generally a much less common phenomenon than male migration. So if we look at some indicators of migration and development across these two regions, this is specifically you know, looking at things like remittances or investments or um, contributions to Tunisia from migrants abroad, we also see that the picture is not drastically different. While similar proportions of young adults know of migrant investments in their towns, residents in Enfidia are more likely to, to live in a household that receives international remittances. So we can see here that you know, there are ideas of migration contributing to the region. Um, in, in both of the cases, more around 30% or more of people live in households that receive remittances from abroad. So this is quite a large proportion. So it's clear that migration uh, is playing a, a key role in both of these areas. It's clear that many migrants have the aspirations to move abroad, but that the channels to be able to do this are dwindling and that the people who are already abroad are contributing back in a significant way to their communities. So like I mentioned before, if you're interested to dig more into this specific situation of Tunisia, definitely check out the reports on the MIGNEX website and stay tuned to this channel and keep a lookout on the MIGNEX website for new updates coming all of the time on the project. We will be continuing this series covering each of the different countries and the different study locations. Of course, if you found this video useful, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the content that's uploaded on different migration issues every week. And I definitely hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.